Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we give you thanks this night. To you belong all the glory. To you belong all the honor. To you belong all adoration. For your faithfulness over each of our lives. We give you praise, oh God, that you are thinking about us. Lord, you did not look at the lowly stature, the lowly nature of your handmaids. You have decided to call us to yourself. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise that we are the ones you have counted to come before you this night. Take all adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, we worship you. You brought us from different parts of this nation and outside. Oh, Father, we worship you. That we are women at a time like this. Even in the history of our nations. We bless your name. Receive all our praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, here we are. Lord, here we are. We are not gathered unto any human being. We are not gathered unto a woman from Nigeria. We are gathered together unto you. For unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. Unto you, Lord, we have gathered. We ask, Lord, that your good hand will rest upon us. We pray that your presence will tabernacle with us. We ask, Lord, that each one of us will encounter you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray tonight, oh Lord, come among us. Come in your power. Come in your might. Come in your sweetness. Come and stamp your image deep in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are here, Lord. We are here for you. We are here for you. Lord, we are here for you. You have a purpose for bringing us together. Let it be accomplished. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, this night that your word will come to us. Let it come to us with simplicity. Let it come to us, O oh God, with power. Let it come to us with grace. Let it do your will in each of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, come and help us. Open our eyes of understanding. Tear the veil from our hearts. Let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let there be light. In the beginning you commanded. You said let there be light. And there was light. Tonight we pray let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ. Let darkness take their flight. Let darkness vanish away from each of our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord come among us. Accomplish your very hard desire. And let your name alone be glorified. We stand against every power, every principality, every spirit of the devil that wage war against the purpose of God, especially for women. We stand tonight. We banish you from here in the name of Jesus. We declare this meeting is unto the law. You are not wanted here. Every spirit of the devil we exclude you from here. In the name of Jesus Christ. We cast you out of our midst. We cast you out of our fears. We cast you out of the purpose of God. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare this meeting holy unto the Lord. We sanctify this arena by the blood of Jesus. We declare only the Lord shall have his way. Only the will of God shall be done here. Lord, have your way here. Spirit of the living God, have your liberty. Do what you please in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing us. You will do beyond our asking tonight. We worship and bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This night, I want to appreciate the Lord who brought us together and particularly brought us here from Nigeria to serve God's purpose in your midst. It's a privilege for me that we are here in your midst. I don't take it for granted at all that God has gathered all of you together to listen to the word of God. Amen. It's not a little thing. And I pray that the Lord who gathered us together, he will accomplish his purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This night, our meeting, the theme of our meeting is Women Arise and Build. It is time for us to rise up to our destiny as women in our different nations. It is time. We cannot waste any more moments. Otherwise, calamity will befall us. You will soon discover that God is in a hurry over this matter. Especially when you look at the situation of things, whether in Nigeria or Liberia or even Syria alone. We cannot afford to wait any longer. God is calling women to arise everywhere to build their nations, to build their homes, to build other lives all around them so that his purpose will prosper in our nations. I pray that we will answer him when he calls on us in the name of Jesus Christ. This night, I would like you to know that women are very crucial in the purpose of God. We are not ordinary addendum in God's purpose. Women have a specific space that God has carved for them in his purpose on the face of the earth. Many women don't know this, so they live their lives as they like. But that era has finished. We must live a purposeful life even as women in our generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Women are very crucial. Women are very foundational when it comes to building the nation. Women are very fundamental. Very foundational. If women will not rise up even if men rise up, nothing will happen. Because the women that don't rise up will spoil what the men are doing. Women are very fundamental, very crucial in the purpose of God. And right from the beginning, in the book of Genesis, even the Lord God himself, spells, you know, he, he spelled it out in the scriptures. When he made man, when he made woman. The Lord himself showed that it's very important for women to participate and contribute to his purpose on the face of the earth. If you read Genesis chapter 1 verses 27 and 28, you will discover the Lord speaking very categorically on this particular matter of the importance the cruciality of women in his work on the face of the earth. Genesis chapter 1, we will read verses 27 and 28. Verse 27. So, God created man in his own image. 
in the image of God he created him male and female he created them and then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth right from the beginning the Lord God when he created the man and the woman the Bible says he blessed them everybody say he blessed them Yes. How many people did he bless? Yes. Them. The man and the woman. It was not the man alone that he blessed. He blessed both the man and the woman. Which means the woman also carries part of the blessings of God for the earth. You must not die with that blessing. Amen. That blessing is not meant for the grave. It's meant for the fulfillment of God's purpose on the earth. And you will soon begin to see the blessings that God poured upon the woman. He blessed them and he, he said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Govern it. Subdue it. Which means the commission that God put upon mankind on the face of the earth was placed on both the man and the woman. So to sit down, just eating and drinking, is not, is not the plan and purpose of God. You have something to accomplish. Not only to be a children, but also to govern the earth along with the man that God created. We are part of God's plan upon the face of the earth. We are not meant to be ordinary bench warmers even in church. We are not meant to be consumers upon the face of the earth. We are meant to be contributors to the plan and purpose of God. And so when we say God is calling us to arise and build is in order. It's part of God's plan. We are not to leave our men alone to struggle to do the work of God. I pray that God will help us to understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In building a nation, women are crucial. Because we are also meant not only to have children, but also to to fulfill the plan of God, to subdue it, to put the earth, to put Liberia under God's control. Yeah. To put Syria Leone under God's control. Yeah. It's our commission. As well as the men. It's our commission. And I'm praying that you will not die without fulfilling your own part of that commission. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ruth chapter 4 that Rachel and Leah were the two women who built the house of Israel. Women, very crucial in building a nation. Even in the early church, do you know that women contributed a lot? Do you remember Acts chapter 1 verse 14? When the Bible was listing the 120 disciples that Jesus left behind, women were among them. Even Jesus did not neglect women in the matter of discipleship. Because he knew that women who are disciples today will become his missionaries tomorrow. He knew they will do the work of God on earth tomorrow. So he did not drive away women when he was working. Women are very crucial. Even in building the early church, women are very important. And so, even now, we cannot afford to sit down as women thinking that God will be able to do his work with men alone. The work of God will be lopsided. May it not be lopsided in your time. May 
said the work of God not not fail in our own time in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and in building the family do you know women are very crucial how can we have a family without a woman there is no such family in fact in Proverbs 14 verse 1 the Bible says a wise woman builds her own home but the foolish tears it down with her own hands a wise woman builds a wise woman builds a wise woman builds God has called us as builders and we cannot we cannot shy away from that responsibility if we don't build the family even the nation will be torn asunder if we don't arise as women because the family is the unit of the society Liberia is made up of many families put together isn't it and women are the builders of the family can you now see why women are the builders of the nation whatever we see in Liberia today women caused it you are not getting me because women have been commissioned by God to build the family and so to build the nation if you see a nation with moral decadence with a, a falling moral standard we caused it women caused it if you see Liberia today with our girls becoming a prey in the hands of men women caused it that's what you built if you see any nation with all our youth having a violent character the women inside that nation caused it that's the kind of nation that they have built oh how crucial it is for us to hear god tonight that we are the builders of liberia we are the builders of syria alone if we don't rise up to build god is going to call us to order he's going to call us to judgment on the last day look at the kind of things happening in liberia today do you ever imagine that god is happy i know even you you are not happy I know you are not happy. No mother will be happy to see her children going down the drain. Yes. To see little, little children being drunkards. Yes. This is unlike God. God is not happy with that situation. And so, if God has called us together in this meeting as women, to challenge us and charge us to rise up and build, is because he still has a future for Liberia. Yes. He has a future of our nations. Yeah. And we must not let him down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So when we see a, a kind of a kind of you know moral laxity, when we see the family system collapsing in our nation, when we see violence here and there, it just shows that the foundation that the women in this nation and in our nations have laid has already collapsed and the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do the foundation for the people of our nations is gradually being destroyed and so you see a lot of trouble here and there as soon as people want to start building and building and building because they are building on a faulty foundation what you discover about the building later it collapses and then we start again trying to build even the church is struggling trying to build to build on a faulty foundation what you discover after some time either war or a bola comes to scatter it this is not the plan of God my sisters this is not the will of God it's important for us to begin from tonight to call on God 
to come and rescue our nation from this evil that is befalling us. The foundation is already eaten up. God must come back to us to come and rebuild this faulty foundation. And if the foundation of our young people is being destroyed, that again also shows that even for us as women, we must examine our foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. Even though we are known as a Christian nation, something is wrong somewhere. What is happening to us is unlike Christ. We don't resemble Christ. This is not what Jesus died for. This is not the kind of Liberia that Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for. And we cannot continue to, to deceive ourselves and say we are Christians when actually things are collapsing all around us. If we will be sincere as women, let's examine our foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. Are you going to be sincere tonight? Are you ready for us to dig into the foundation? To check of what sort is your foundation? It's important if we will not deceive ourselves. And I tell you, this meeting is not for cajole. If you are looking for a meeting where they will cajole you, you miss road already. This is not the kind of meeting. We will face ourselves and, and let the Lord confront us with the truth. And then we will make amends. And we will see what God will do with our nation. God wants to handle our foundation right from tonight. And I pray you will respond to him. Because the future, you know, God has not given up on us. That's what makes me glad. That despite all the evils that are happening to us, despite the... the the kind of spiritual and physical slavery that we have found ourselves as a nation. God has not given up on us. As long as there is life, there is hope. And God is going to bring us hope even in this meeting. We must not take it for granted. So, the foundation is the matter. If you see your children making you to weep as a woman that already shows that something is wrong somewhere you must be real you must be sincere with yourself and say lord i don't want to blame my children lord show me what is wrong with me that i am producing children that are vagabonds i'm producing children that are not pleasing god Children that even the nation is crying about. Yeah. Lord, what is wrong with me? It's important for us to face that reality. I pray that you will not deceive yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight, tonight, by the grace of God, I want to present to you Jesus, the sure foundation. Jesus Christ, the sure foundation. And we are going to read from the book of First Corinthians. We will read chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. We are going to read from verse 9 to 11. First Corinthians 3, verse 9 to 11. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. No other foundation can anyone lay 
than that which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation for life. Foundation for living. Foundation for whatever you want to build in life. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation for a home that will stand the test of time. If your home is collapsing or it has collapsed, check your foundation. When that home was being formed, something must have gone wrong somewhere. Jesus is the sure foundation. And the Bible says, Whosoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. So if you are building, and the building is collapsing, and you are being put to shame, check your foundation. Check your foundation. Because whosoever puts his trust in this foundation shall not be confounded. First Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Maybe we read it from where Peter quoted from, and then we'll read First Peter. Let's read Isaiah 28, verse 16. Isaiah 28, verse 16. We are still talking about Jesus. Being the sure foundation. Isaiah 28 verse 16. Therefore thus says the Lord God. Behold I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. Whoever believes will not act hastily. First Peter chapter 2 verse 6 therefore it is also contained in the scripture behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame who is that foundation please Jesus Christ. He is the foundation that cannot be shaken. And whosoever puts his or her trust in him shall never, never be put to shame. He is the foundation that cannot be shaken. When storms of life come, if whatever you are building is built on that foundation, Look, the Bible says categorically, both in the Old Testament and it was referred to again in the New Testament. Whosoever built on this foundation will by no means be put to shame. Which means anything you are building, anything you are building, any life you are building, any home you are building, any career you are building, any business you are building, any child you are building, and you are not building on this foundation. If the foundation of that thing you are building does not originate from Jesus, if you are building as you like, you just you are just doing what seems right in your own sight, and you just use Jesus to bless it. That idea did not originate from Christ. What you are building has no foundation. It's a matter of time; it will collapse. Are you hearing this from the scriptures? If what you are building does not originate from Christ, if your Christian life does not originate from Christ, do you know there are people like that? You go to church, but your life is not founded on Christ. You pay your tithe, you give to the work of God, but your life does not originate from Christ. 
it's a matter of time it will collapse you are building a child's life you are paying the school fees you are sending the child to school you even send the child to church but you have not laid the solid the sure foundation in that child's life even though that child is religious it's a matter of time that life will collapse Jesus Christ is the sure foundation you are building your home and Jesus is not the one originating it he is not the one that you are patterning it after you are not patterning your life your family after Christ the pattern song it's a matter of time that home will collapse it will just be a, a little surprising for people who will see it in the future and they say uh -uh, but you waited in church why is it with you like this what is the matter with you if you check very well the foundation something has gone wrong somewhere the chief cornerstone has been omitted the sure foundation has been omitted how will it stand whatever else you are building upon some build their marriage on i love you you are the sweet in my mouth you are the sugar in my tea all those things they are sinking sand sinking sand that wine will soon finish that home will soon collapse it's a sinking sand christ is the sure foundation whosoever believes in him shall never be put to shame whosoever builds on him the building will stand the storms of life but if you build and you are not building on him whatever you are building will soon scatter let that one sink in your heart tonight so that we will take off from here tonight and you will be able to look back and check your foundation check the foundation of your very life your christian life check the foundation of your family check the foundation of your career who told you to go into that business did you find out is christ the the foundation so if it collapses when christ is not the foundation it will not be a surprise because you are building on sinking sand may the lord help us tonight to make correction in the name of jesus christ he is the sure foundation the bible says in uh, psalm 127 verse 1 he says except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it that's why if jesus is not there you are laboring in vain and jesus himself said in luke chapter 11 i want you to open that luke 11 verse 23 is there a microphone somewhere please would you like to read for me luke 11 verse 23 Luke 11, 23. Put it on, please. Ah. Uh, right? Maybe I should read it. Luke 11, 23. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. This is Jesus speaking. He who is not with me and is trying to build anything, he should just prepare for scattering. And he who does not gather with me, what is he doing, please? He's scattering. Whatever you build and is not based on Christ and is leading, whatever you build and you have not patterned it after Jesus, you are scattering it will not stand because jesus is the one that god has lifted up for us as the pattern for living jesus the bible says when he took 
his disciples to the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter, you know, when uh, Elijah and Moses were talking with him on the Mount, do you remember the story? They were talking with him on the Mount, and Peter suddenly saw Moses and uh, Elijah talking with Jesus. He was so excited, and he said, Oh, Master, let us build three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He was making Jesus equal to Moses. One tabernacle for Moses and the same one for Jesus. One for Elijah. He was making Jesus equal to Elijah. And a voice came all the way from heaven to silence Peter. He said, he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased listen to him he never said that about about Elijah he never said it about Moses he never said it about any man of God only Jesus has satisfied God beyond all measure he said I'm completely satisfied with him do you know God was not completely satisfied with Moses that great man of God do you know God was not completely satisfied with Elijah but of Jesus he said I am completely satisfied with him listen to him Jesus is the one that God has lifted up for us as the pattern song someone to follow someone to listen to all others are what we call awaiting results jesus has got his own report from heaven god has spoken concerning him i am well pleased with him all others we are still waiting for our result all of us put together all bishops all pastors all apostles all evangelists they are still waiting for their result the report sheet has not come Jesus is the one that God has lifted up for us to, to pattern our lives after and to build our lives upon as a sure foundation. If anyone, any pastor, any apostle tells you that what he says is final and that you must obey him even when it is contrary to Jesus, put that man aside and follow Jesus. Are you hearing me tonight? Yes. Many women have fallen prey in the hands of men and women of God who equate themselves with Jesus Christ. And yet, they have not yet got their report sheet. If any man or woman of God lifts himself or herself beyond Jesus Christ over your life, put him aside. And follow Jesus. Amen. He is the pattern. He is the sure foundation. If you build on any other, you will sink. But if you build based on what Jesus tells you, you remember what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. Anyone who hears these sayings of mine and does it is a wise man. Is building his life upon what? Upon a rock. The storms come, the rain beat against the house, the winds blow against the house. But what happens to the house? It will stand because it is built upon what Jesus says. He is the pattern son. He is the one whose words becomes a rock underneath whatever, whatever you are building. When you listen to him and you do what he says, your life will stand the test of time. Amen. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation. Church is not the sure foundation. We will go to church because Jesus himself is building his church. Are you hearing me? Yeah. We will go to church. We will submit to our pastors. We will submit to our leaders. But let me tell you, any leader that tells you anything, 
that runs contrary to Jesus that you have read about in the Bible. Put him aside and follow Jesus. Is our pattern for living. May the Lord give us understanding. So that from here tonight, you will be sure you are building upon a sure foundation. Only in Christ, all things hold together. That's another scripture. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. If you have, is that mic working now? Right? Colossians 1 17 from NIV. NIV. Colossians 1 17. Yes, please. He is before all things jesus is before all things and in him all things hold together in him all things hold together outside him all things scatter only a life that is in him has the hope of holding together only a home that is built in him holds together outside Jesus all things scatter Jesus Christ is the sure foundation you don't have to build your life on what will scatter you will be deceiving yourself too much if you decide to neglect this instruction that God is giving you tonight this is God's principle for living. He says, build your life on Christ. Build your home on Him. Build your life, your career, your business, whatever you are building. Build it on Him. Pattern it after Him. You are sure that there will be no scattering. In Him, only in Christ. All things hold together. Only in Christ. Only when someone has, has allowed Jesus to be the foundation for her life will that life not scatter. Because let me tell you the truth. Whether you are building on sand or you are building on the rock, the same condition will befall you. The wind, the storm, and the rain. If you read Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27, he said, the rains came down, the winds blew, and the, the storms blew and beat against that house. So whether the house is on the rock or on the sand will determine what will befall that house. You will scatter if you don't build your life on Christ. I don't know how many times I should say it. We will soon discover why I am emphasizing this tonight. I was drifting before Jesus met me. Even my own life was drifting. I was drifting wherever my friends drifted. If they say it is party today, I will go there. If they say it is uh, uh, whatever, wherever they drifted, I drifted. I was just going wherever my friends were going. You know peer pressure. That was the matter. Until somehow, I don't know how God did it, that I entered the crusade, the crusade ground on that day. And the word of God came and I gave my life to Christ. This is 39 years. And since then, I tell you the truth and I lie not. My life has stood and you are meeting me today because of that. Yeah. Honestly, if not that I met Jesus at that time, 
you will never have met me. Because I would have married a wrong man. There was a man I was intending to marry. I don't know where he is today. So you will never have met me. Our marriage would have hit the rock because he was a rough man. But since I didn't have the right foundation, I was drifting. Drifting here and there. Until Jesus came and countered my life. I heard the gospel. I gave my life to Jesus. 39 years. I have not looked back since then. If I am what I am today, it's because of what Jesus did as the foundation for my life. Look, Jesus can make a life to stand. If your own life is shaking, check your foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. If you are falling today and rising tomorrow, something is wrong with your foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. The word of God cannot be broken. He said, whosoever believes in this foundation, this sure foundation, shall never be put to shame. Since that day, there was a straight path for my feet. Even the course I was reading in the university began, be, you know, became straightforward. The choice of who to marry was no longer a problem. My life was aligned with the will of God. The future was revealed clearly as I walked with God. Look, if Jesus becomes your foundation, your life will no, no longer struggle. If Jesus becomes your foundation, you will see in service concern, every now and then, he will reveal the future to you. He will begin to guide your, your path. He says, he says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. That's what he did for me. Jesus, the sure foundation. Many today who are drifting is because they don't have that foundation. Never mind, they go to church. Never mind, they have Christian names. Never mind, they are choir members. But they don't have this sure foundation. And it shows because their lives are drifting. Right in church, they are scattered. Right in church, they are not gathering with Christ. Right in church, they are messing up in sexual immorality. Boyfriend, girlfriend, even inside church. As they are singing, they are legging, they are legging, they are kicking each other. How will your life not scatter that way? How will your marriage not scatter that way? Only Jesus is the sure foundation that cannot be shaken. I pray you will receive him tonight. You will not deceive yourself to say, I am going to a Pentecostal church who says I'm not born again. I'm born again whether you like it or not. Ah, you are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself because by their fruits, you shall know them. It's not a matter of talking. Show me your fruits and I will show you who you are. What is your foundation tonight? What is the foundation of your life that you are building? Young lady, you want to marry. What is the foundation? Is it because that man is trying to pay your school fees? That's why you are giving your life to him. Wow, you are preparing for his scattering in the future. You will weep. Nobody will show you mercy. And it will be too late by then. Because once you enter marriage with a wrong man, you have entered. You have entered. What are you building your life upon? That you are so confident. What are you building your life upon? When it is not Christ. And you think you are doing something that will last, last your li lifetime. You must not deceive your, your, yourself tonight. Even if people are deceiving you and say, hey, if, you, if you go away from that man, that your man friend, that your boyfriend, who will pay your school fee, you will suffer. You have just started suffering. The future will tell. 
and then it will be too late. I pray that God will pull your ears tonight to hear him so that you will allow him to be your sure foundation so that the future will be secure for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the sure foundation. He came to the world to die for us. He did not even die for himself, you know. It was love for us that brought him down. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish or have eternal life. When God makes such a promise, sometimes because it's, it's so common in the Bible and commonly quoted, you don't know the meaning again. You don't know the love of God that passes human understanding. That made him to send his only begotten son into the world to die for sinners. He who knew no sin, he became sin for us. What a love. You want to die for a man who did not die for you. Look at Jesus who died on the cross for you. Him you are neglecting. Surely you are scattering. You will pray with me tonight that this Jesus, this love that brought him down, it will affect your heart tonight. It will change your story tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to the world to die for sinners like me and you. He did not sin. It was my, my sin he died for. Do you know the Bible says the wages of sin is death? The punishment for sin is death. And Jesus, because of his love for us, he came as if to say, God, don't let this lady die. Let me die in her place. Don't let us suffer for her sins because it is appointed for man once to die and after that judgment if she dies in her sin she will face judgment eternally lord don't let her die i will die in her place that's what jesus did the the the, the one who knew no sin dying for sinners like me and you he is the serpent, the, I mean, the, 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 the seed of the woman that the Bible says came into the world to bruise the head of the serpent. He came not only, not only to die for our sins. You know, sometimes we don't know what Jesus did on the cross, so we take it lightly. We take it so lightly, we don't know the meaning again. Can you imagine, even for our sins alone, that's a great thing he has done. That someone should take my punishment. Do you know that as he was dying on the cross, the blood he shed was what brought me forgiveness with God. Amen. Do you know I would never have been forgiven? It's not that his blood, the blood of the righteous Jesus was shed for me. Do you know there is no way you pray to God and say, God, forgive me that he will listen to you? It's not for the blood that Jesus shed at Calvary. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It was his blood that he shed on the cross that brought us forgiveness. If not for that, the wrath of God would have been upon us day and night. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 summarizes what he did on the cross and I want you to listen tonight. It is as you put your trust in Jesus tonight and what he did on the cross that that foundation will be laid in your life as well. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 I'd like us to read from verse 11 to 15. Colossians 2 11, 11 to 15. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried within in baptism, in which you also were raised within through faith in the working of God, 
who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the hand of handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Thank you. Do you know that it is our sins, actually, not even our sicknesses, that brought Jesus down? If it was our sickness, when he came into the world, he was healing people, isn't it? He shouldn't have gone to die on the cross. He should have just continued to heal and tell his disciples to keep healing people. But if he healed people and they died, where would they still go? Yeah. To hell. They would still have gone to hell. So those who preach healing and not the forgiveness and the deliverance from our sins, they are preaching half gospel. He died on the cross not just for our healing. He didn't even need to die on the cross before he will heal us. Are you hearing me? Yeah. This is solid foundation that God wants to lay in our hearts tonight. He died on the cross for our sins. Because it was our sins that separated us from God in the first place. Isaiah 59, before I come to this Colossians, Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 says, The hands of the Lord are not too short that he cannot deliver. His ears are not dull that he cannot hear our prayers. But what happens? Our sins are separated between us and God so that he will not hear. Sin is the quarrel. Sin is the quarrel between us and God. It's not our sickness. It's not even our poverty. It is our sins that is the problem because sin hinders God from hearing us. Sin hinders God from coming to our rescue when we are in trouble. Sin opens the door for the devil to attack us. Sin is wicked. Sin is the problem. And if we would talk about what Jesus did at Calvary today is because of our sins. Yes. It's because of our sins that we have committed. That's what is taking us to hell. Sickness doesn't take anybody to hell. God will heal you of your sicknesses even in this meeting. But that is not our focus. Amen. What we are looking for is our deliverance from sin. Because that is the problem. That is the problem between us and God. That is what is making our nation today to go down the drain. It is sin. We pray and prayers are not answered. We call on God and he did not hear us. It is our sin that separated us from him. And the Bible says, all sinners, all, all the cowards, all the fearful, all liars, all sexually immoral, all those who tell lies, all those who are witches and wizards, they will have their part in the lake of fire and brimstone. Sin is the problem. You didn't hear in that scripture. If you read that scripture, I quoted from Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. If you read that scripture, he didn't say all those who are sick will have their part in the lake of fire. Did you hear that? No, it's not there. Sin is the problem. Sin is the problem. In fact, Jesus says, if your eye will make you to sin, block it out. Yes. It's better you go to heaven with one eye. Sick. Than to go to hell with your two eyes. So sickness is not the problem. What is the problem? Sin. Sin is the problem. And tonight God must deal with it. 
so that our foundation will be solid and we will be able to build in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot build others if God has not, you know, built our own foundation and made it sure. Sin is the problem of mankind with God. If you read 1 John 3, verses 9 and 10, we want to establish that fact so that you will know what God is expecting of you tonight. 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, you will see again that sin is the problem. 1 John 3, 9 and 10. 1 John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Thank you. The Bible says, whoever has been born of God does not sin does not continue to live in sin because his seed remains in him God's very seed God's very life God's very nature those are other versions says God's very nature abides in him it's not because he has power to resist sin it's because God's life is in him that's why he, he doesn't live in sin and he cannot sin because he has been born of god he doesn't continue in sin because he has been born of god the nature of god the gene if there is anything like that the gene of god the seed of god abides in him and verse 10 says in this T H I S singular. This one thing is what what demarcates between children of God and children of the devil. In this matter, this matter of sin, he said, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Not in two things, in this. Just this one thing, this matter of sin. You ask somebody, are you a child of God? Ah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm born again, praise the Lord. I'm a child of God. But look at that life. It's living in sin. Who is it, please? It's a child of the devil. There's no two way about it. It's a child of the devil. The Bible says this is the only way we can recognize who is a child of God. So, if you are still living in sin, if you are still living in sexual immorality, you are so religious like Nicodemus. You are so very faithful in paying your dues in church, but you are still living in sin. Pastors collect your tithe and offering, but you are still living in sin. Let me tell you the truth. The Bible says, you are a child of the devil and when your life is over the devil will come and collect his own in this we know those who are children of god and children of the devil is in the matter of sin take your life tonight do you say you are a christian but you are still living in sin your foundation is faulty your foundation is faulty because which Jesus did you meet that has not delivered you from sin did you not hear the Bible say you shall call his name Jesus for he will deliver his people from their sins yes. which Jesus did you meet and he did not deliver you from your sin you are making a mistake go back again Relay your foundation. Go back again. Let a sure foundation be laid in your life. Jesus is the sure foundation who delivers from sin. With Jesus, did you meet? And 
you are still struggling over habits of life. Habits. With Jesus did you meet and he did not deliver you? Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, why has he not taken away your own? There is a matter somewhere. There is a mistake somewhere. And tonight you will cry to God and say, Lord, my foundation is faulty. I thought I have repented, but sin is still in my life. I don't want to deceive myself again. My foundation is faulty. Lord Jesus, come again. Come to me again and lay a proper foundation. Amen. Jesus delivers from sin. He forgives and he delivers. He forgives and he delivers. I hope you know the, the difference between the two. You can be forgiven, but you still go back and sin and come back next Sunday and still confess the same sin. Isn't it? But when he delivers you, that's the end of the matter. Jesus the Bible says he will deliver his people from their sins. Now, back to the Colossians that we read. We are trying to trace what Jesus did for us on the cross. So that you will cash in on it and build a solid foundation for your Christian faith. The Bible says in that Colossians chapter 2 that in verse 11 he said, in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. I don't have too much time tonight, but what God is talking about, about the body of the sin of the flesh, is that there is, there is something that makes you to sin. There is an embodiment of sin that dwells in us that we were born with. It's not our fault. There is an embodiment of sin that even if you confess your sin and that embodiment of sin is not taken away and uprooted, you will still go back to sin. Amen. The flesh, the human nature is that embodiment of sin. And Jesus did not only shed his blood to forgive us our sins, he also cut off by the circumcision of, of his own flesh. Cut it off from us, uprooted our human nature. You know that as human beings, we have human nature, isn't it? Sometimes you also say it. You say, it's my nature. That's my nature. It's my nature to talk. It's my nature to fight. And once I fight, my eyes come down. It's my nature to get angry. Once I'm angry and I speak my mind out, I'm okay. It's my nature. That your nature. God wants it uprooted. God wants to give you a new life. You were born with that nature. And it cannot please God. So on the cross, that was what Jesus died to uproot and terminate that life. That life you were born with is not good enough to serve God. In fact, you cannot improve it. Some people try New Year resolution to improve their nature. They say, God, 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 God. Oh, I've been committing sin too much. I sleep with too many men. Lord, this year, this year, this year, I pray. Lord, help me. I make a promise I will not sleep with men again. I will not, I will not before February ends. You have done it again. Because the nature that makes you do it is still there. If you don't want oranges in your compound, it is not enough to pluck away the oranges on the orange tree. You must uproot the tree itself. Then you can be sure you will not have oranges in your compound again. God wants to uproot that tree of unrighteousness. That your nature that produces this sinful lifestyle. That will be the solution. It's not enough to just get your sins forgiven. It's important to get the nature that produces sin to get it uprooted. Yes. When you get home, you can read Galatians chapter 5 from verses 19 to 21. 
you will see the works of the human nature. You will see that sexual immorality is on top of the list. Immorality of all kinds, lust of the flesh, anger, hatred, fighting, witchcraft, sorcery, partying, jealousy, wrath. All these are produced by the human nature. But this is why Jesus came to die for us so that our human nature will be terminated. That life we were born with, that natural life, God wants to put an end to it. That's why he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. The life you were born with must be terminated. You must be born the second time. God must give you a new life. His own very life. But how will he give you his own very life on top of your natural life? God doesn't do that. Until you sign out and say, Lord, take away this life. Take it out of the way. This is my natural life that always drives me to sin. Take it away. Until you sign, put your signature, God will not touch you. You will not be included in Christ's death. But once you, you are tired of that sinful life and you tell him, Lord, enough is enough. I keep, I keep confessing sins. But the sin is not leaving me alone. Take away this my natural life. Uproot it and give me your own new life. That is when the deed will be done. So on the cross, he took away that human nature. Verse 13 says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now, verse 14. He said, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary, contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. He wiped out all the handwriting of requirements, all the sins Good News Bible says all the sins, the record of sins that we have committed. All the record of his commandments that we have broken. Somebody is keeping that record against your name. The devil, the accuser of the brethren. He keeps that record. And each time God wants to promote you, he goes to God. And say, God, this girl has aborted six times. And you are the Lord. You are a just God. How will you promote an unrighteous person? And then, so your promotion is finished. God says, ah, no, I will not do that. But now, as Jesus went to Calvary, by his death for us, it was for us, he did it. The Bible says, he took away that record. The devil kept it under lock and key. He did not know that when he was slapping Jesus with the hands of those soldiers, when he was piercing his side, when they put the tongues on his head, he did not know that Jesus was suffering for my sins. He did not know that Jesus was already taking away the record of those commandments which I have broken. The devil didn't know. The Bible says, at the devil known he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He didn't know it was a top secret in heaven. He removed it from the cupboard of the devil and nailed it to the cross. So if you go to God, anyone at all who has known this truth and has surrendered her life to Christ and you have, you have signed out that God should take away this this sinful nature. Every such person, the Bible says, all those records have been wiped out. Amen. If you go to your record, clean before God. is clean, pure white. And the devil looking for something to say against you will look into his cupboard. He will not find any. Amen. Because Jesus took it away by his death on the cross. That's what he did for us. It's not a little matter at all. That 
He silenced the accuser of the brethren. He removed the ground from under the feet of the devil. The ground to accuse you of sin. He removed it. Why will you not key into that? Why will you continue to struggle and prove, prove as if you are something before God? Why will you not lie behind Jesus and say, Lord, you did it all for me. Yeah. All for me. You did it for me. Lord, I believe. So take away this my sinful nature. Why will you continue to struggle by yourself as if you can save yourself? He did it all for you. That's why he is the sure foundation. No other person has died for another one like that. No other blood was acceptable before God than the blood of the righteous Jesus, the Son of God. So he removed that handwriting. Oh, and there is a family curse. Hey, let's go and break the family curse. Oh, they have uh, buried your something on the like a cord under one tree. All those handwriting that was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way. The Bible didn't say he will take it out of the way. You didn't get me. He has. He has. Yes. Don't let people deceive you any longer. But this will only happen to you as you key into what Jesus did on the cross. He has taken all those causes out of the way. The Bible says, cause is the one who hangs on the tree. So the causes that is upon me, he has, he has taken it to the cross. He has taken those causes. So for me, there is no cause. Hey, your family cause. Hey, ancestral cause. Oh, that one cost. I don't have any problem with that any longer. If you have problem, continue. And you see people who don't know what to teach again. They are collecting money just to, 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 to prove that you need to be delivered. Of course, you need to be delivered because you have not been delivered. He has taken away all the handwriting of ordinances that was contrary to me. He was hung on the tree. He took away my cause. All the family lineage, whatever cause is operated in that family, it terminated. It terminated. It, it, it doesn't transpass to me any longer because Jesus has taken it out of the way. What again did Jesus do for us on the cross? So that you will be free. Free not only from your sin, Free from the flesh. Again, the Bible says, He disarmed principalities and powers. Did you see that? Yeah. Verse 15. He disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them. Triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them by the cross. What does it mean to disarm? If you take a soldier and you, you disarm him, what do you do to him? You take away all his ammunition, including his uniform, his gun, his bullet, his boot, all his shield. You take it away. What have you done? You have disarmed him. He has no ammunition any longer. Nothing to attack any longer. Over a child of God, over someone for whom Jesus died, who has come to believe in this sure foundation, the devil has no ammunition any longer. The devil has lost his power. In fact, in another version, the Bible says, Jesus siphoned the venom, the venom that the enemy raged against us. And you know that the power of a snake is in the venom. Isn't it? Yes. Jesus took away the venom of the serpent of old. So, where is his power? Oh my child of God, where is his power? They say, oh, demons are worrying you. Come, let's help you cast him out. If you are truly troubled by demons, check your foundation. Something is wrong somewhere. And I don't want you to take this matter lightly tonight. What Jesus has done, you must not render it powerless. 
you must not allow the death of Christ on the cross to be powerless over your own life. Since the day God revealed this, that look, Jesus has disarmed principalities and powers on my behalf. I sleep and scatter my legs. Where I am in Christ, the devil cannot come. Let the demons be meeting on my roof. They can't come near me. I don't even need to, to pray about that. He says he has. Not that he will. He has disarmed principalities and powers on my behalf. I'm not afraid of demons, you know. There is nothing they can do. Nothing. And I'm not, I'm not, just, I'm not just boasting. I'm telling you what Jesus did for me. And I'm telling you this in reality. Yes. This is what I've experienced for 39 years. I don't need to line up behind somebody to come and cast out my demon. I don't have any. Jesus has delivered me from all that. By his death on the cross. Which if you know tonight, you will be free. Because you will be set with them. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You will become instrumental in going out to go and help others by the truth which you are experiencing yourself. It's not a good experience that we call you a Christian and demons are still pressing you down in the night. Something is wrong with your foundation. Take it very well and tonight can be the day of your difference. Amen. You will make a difference in the name of Jesus. Amen. God does not want to raise women who are ordinary puppets. Women who are weaklings. Who cannot lift a finger against the devil. Women who cannot help others out of their calamity. That's not the kind of women God wants to raise. If you are going to be builders, you yourself you must be well founded on the rock. You must stand firm on the rock to be able to lend a helping hand to people who are being tossed to and fro on the sea of life. Jesus has delivered us from the hands of principalities and powers. Witches have no, no power over the child of God. There is nothing demons can do to a child of God. Mind my words. I'm not saying to people who go to church. When you know this truth, you will be delivered. When you know this truth, you don't need to bind and loose. There are more things, better things to do with your prayer. Do you know our prayers is not just to be binding the devil that is oppressing us in the night? Abba, you are wasting prayer. If you read the scriptures, you will see many things that God wants us to pray about. Not to be praying about demons all the time. Christ has disarmed principalities and powers. He has made a public show of them on the cross on our behalf. Believe him tonight, you will be free. You will be set free. And tonight, what does he say to you? You also, you can have that foundation. It says, all you need to do, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You are too restless. You are too restless. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You go from prayer house to prayer house. There is no peace of mind. This is not God's mind for you. This is not God's will for you. This is not the woman that Jesus died for. Who is being tossed to and fro? Jesus is saying to you, that error can end tonight. Amen. That thing that the devil has been doing over your life can end tonight. Amen. If only you will take this Jesus, the sure foundation. And the way he comes with his victory is to take away that your human nature and give you his own very life. Can someone help me with living Bible? 
and read Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, verse 17 and verse 21. Who has living Bible? Does anybody have? Yes. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17, verse 21. Please listen very well. Ah, please wait for the mic. Can you stand on your feet? When someone become a Christian, yes, he become a brand new person inside. Hmm. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Yes. Verse 21. 21. Yes. For God, for God took the sinless Christ and poor he told him our sins. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. Read it again. That verse 21. For God took the sinless Christ. God took the sinless Christ and poured him. He poured into him our sins. Our sins. Then in exchange, in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. Do you see what Jesus did on the cross and what he wants to achieve in your life? Yes, yes. He doesn't just want to forgive you your sins, you know. He wants to take away from you your human nature, your sins. Take it away and pour it into Christ. And take the life of Christ, God's goodness, God's good life, and pour it into you. Yes. That life witches and wizards cannot conquer that life Amen. that life is not a sinner Amen. are you hearing me tonight Amen. that is the secret of victory Amen. christ in you Amen. the hope of glory Amen. christ's very life god took the sinless christ and poured into christ our sins then there was an exchange he took the life of christ and poured it into us so what god is looking for is that each of his children will be carriers of christ carriers carrying christ's life we are inside that is the secret of victory when you say oh anybody who is a child of god should not continue in sin you will say you will hear many will say it is not possible this is where it is possible. Because Christ is the sinless Christ. All his 33 and a half years, he did not commit one sin. And that very life was taken and put inside us. You sleep. Christ is the one sleeping in you. You are in the kitchen. Christ is in the kitchen. You are in the classroom. Christ is in the classroom. You are preaching. Christ in you is preaching. This is the secret of victory. This is the foundation for correct Christian living. And anyone tonight who will key into this thing that Jesus did, you will have that foundation. So Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. I will give you rest. Come to me. What I did on the cross will become your own. Come to me. You have been falling and rising. I will take away that sinful nature. Come to me. That fearful life. Fearing demons. I will take it away. And put in you my very life. The life of boldness. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. Come to me. I will give you rest. And tonight, the Lord wants to lay that foundation before we go far into the matter of being used by God to build other lives, God wants to lay that foundation in our lives. Amen. When he laid that foundation in Mary Magdalene, do you know Mary became a useful vessel in God's hand? Yes. Demons, seven demons were living inside that woman. But when she encountered Christ, that life transformation took place. Mary became one of the builders of the gospel message do you remember that in john chapter 20 it was mary 
that brought the message of resurrection. Mary Magdalene. Suppose she did not key into that thing. Demons would have wrecked that life. But as the Lord held her and her life was built on a solid foundation, she became the builder of the gospel message. Because Peter, even Apostle Peter, would have been preaching a wrong gospel. He would have been saying, Ah, they stole away my Lord. But for Mary, who stood there and said, I want to see Jesus. I want to see my Lord. And Jesus appeared, the resurrected Lord. And he gave her the message, Go and tell my brothers, I have risen again. What a woman. What a woman. You can be that woman, you know. You can be that woman. That will become one of the builders in our generation. But you must obey his instruction tonight. Come to me. Come to me. I will give you rest. Come to me. I will forgive you. Come to me. I will deliver you. I will. I still have hope for you. You can still be somebody great in my hands. Mary was wretched. But look at what she became. Come to me. I will give you rest. Who will come tonight? We are going to pray. I want you to stand on your feet as we pray tonight. Jesus, the sure foundation is calling on you. And he says, oh, I want to help your life. I want to save you from your sins. I want to give you the secret of victory. I want to deliver you from the power of Satan. I want to deliver you from the power of the devil. I want to make your life stable. I want to make your home established. I want to do something new in your life. Daughter, give me your heart tonight. Will you now pray, Lord Jesus? Lord Jesus, I believe that you came and died for me. Lord, my foundation is faulty. Come and rebuild my foundation. Will you like to pray tonight? Pray, talk to God. Look inside. Examine your foundation. Look at your character. Look at your behavior. Look at what is happening in your family. Look at your children. Is something not wrong somewhere? Look at the home you have built. It's collapsing in your very eyes. Look at your Christian life. There is no difference between you and the unbelievers. Unbelievers are living in sin. You are also living in sin. And you say you are a child of God. Look at your foundation. And say, Lord, have mercy on me. Beat your chest tonight. Confess your sins to him. Call on the Lord to save you. He shall deliver his people from their sins. Call on him. Call on him. Let him come and lay that foundation. Call on the Lord tonight for your life. Your life first. Your life first. You are the one he wants to use. You are the one he wants to use as a builder. Lord, have mercy tonight. Please pray, pray. Talk to God. Oh, you have recognized it. You have seen the wretchedness of your life. You have seen your sinful situation. Open up. Open up to the Lord tonight. Open up. Anyone who hears that these sayings of mine and obeys is a woman building on the rock. Obey him tonight. Call on him to save you. Call on him to save you. Let the sure foundation be laid. Oh, my father. Come by here tonight, oh Lord. Your children are calling on you. Come by here, oh God. We women, we are calling on you. All hope is not lost. You have come to give us hope. Come by here, my Father. Come, Lord Jesus. You died on the cross for us. Come by here, oh God. Look at us calling upon you. Have compassion, oh God. Save us from our sins. Deliver us, oh God. Let there be deliverance tonight. Let there be holiness. 
Let your people possess their possession. Lord, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Come by here, don't pass us by. Savior, don't pass us by. Oh, don't pass us by. Call on the Lord, my sister. It was for you, Jesus died. Your home has cut out. Your business is cut. Your children are wayward. What? what else? What other sign do you want God to show you that your foundation is faulty? Call on the Lord. Lord, come and lay a solid foundation for my life. Jesus, come tonight, come to me. Save me, O oh Lord. Save me from my sins. Save me, deliver me. Lord, come and make a difference in my life. You died on the cross for me. You died for me. It was for me you died. You took away my sins. Why will I continue in it? Break the yoke of sin tonight. Take away my sinful nature. Pray, pray. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. I don't want my sinful nature again. It has landed me into trouble. It made me to see sexual immorality, lying, ah, angry. You are always angry, fighting. Yet you are in church. You pay your tight, but you are fighting. Lord, have mercy tonight. Oh, have mercy. Riba Sanda Korea. Don't deceive yourself. Don't let the devil deceive you tonight to say you are a child of God. In this, we know who is a child of God and who is a child of the devil. Call on the Lord. Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me to keep struggling. Lord, save me tonight. Lord, have mercy on me. What you did for Mary Magdalene, what you did for the women of old, do it in my life. Do it in my life, Lord. Take away my sins. Take away my sins, oh Lamb of God. Take away my sins. Take away my sinful nature. Forgive me, oh Lord. Deliver me. Deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Approve that tree of unrighteousness. Give me your own life. I open my heart to you tonight. Give me your own heart. Give me your own life, Lord. Pour the life of Christ into me. Take away the heart of stone. Take it away, Lord. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. Lord, give me a new heart. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. Let the Lord hear your voice. Don't hide it. Anyone who hides his sin, the Bible says, he shall not prosper. But he who confesses it and forsakes it shall obtain mercy. Call on the Lord. This is the sure foundation. This is the secret of victory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Lord Jesus, I open my heart tonight. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in with your life. Come in with your nature. Come in with your seed. Come and dwell in me. Make me your temple. Make me your house. Make me your temple. Come and live in me. Make me victorious over sin, over Satan, over the world. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy tonight, Lord. Have mercy tonight, Lord. Look at us, oh God, crying to you. You told us, call upon me. I will show you greater and mighty things that you never knew before. Lord, we are calling on you. Hear our cry tonight, oh God. Hear our cry, hear the cry of your people. Hear our cry. Deliver us, oh God, please. Cause us to begin to experience the deliverance from sin, from Satan. Lord, help us tonight.
tonight. We call on you. Lord, put your mark of ownership upon our lives tonight. That from this moment, we become carriers of the Most High God. We become the house of God, the dwelling place of the Most High. Do it tonight, oh God, that we might become the instruments you want to use to build the nation, to build the church, Lord, to build the children, to build our homes. Do it for us tonight. Do it, oh God, we are calling on you. Oh, do it for us. Pray from the depth of your heart. Be sincere with Jesus tonight. He knows those who are calling of him, calling on him out of a pure heart, out of a sincere heart. Call on him. Are you tired of your sinful life? Then call on him and say, Jesus, save me. Lord, enough of this deception. Enough of this deception. I thought I'm a Christian, but I'm still living in sin. Lord, come tonight. Come tonight, oh God. Come and deliver me. Sanda Kuria Bashima Sayakasai, Leko Saikas Kuribo Saikas Karabasa, Hirabasanda Kuria Bashima Ba, Reko Sayaba Saikas Kuribo Saye, Herima Sanda Kuria, Lord, do it tonight, oh God, do it, do it tonight, and give us a testimony. Do it, Lord, in the name of Jesus, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. In Jesus name we pray Amen. tonight are you praying from the depth of your heart you are desiring the sure foundation to be laid in your life you are desiring this thing that Jesus did on the cross to become your own experience it is only such people that God will use you cannot give what you don't have how will you help others to build when that foundation has not been built in your life? But if tonight you are crying to God, having recognized your very situation, you don't want to deceive yourself again. How long will you continue to deceive yourself? And you still see that you have no victory over sin, over Satan. They keep pressing you down in the night. Day and night, you are running helter skelter. How will you continue to deceive yourself? Tonight, Jesus says, come to me, I will give you rest. You need to take a step of faith tonight and say, Jesus, I come to you. You are coming out tonight as you respond to Jesus and say, Lord, yes, Lord, I come to you. Deliver me. Give me rest. Are you there tonight? You are crying from the depth of your heart. And you are saying, Lord, tonight must mark the end of my struggles against sin, against the devil. Lord, I'm coming to you tonight. Will you lift up your hands wherever you are tonight and say, Jesus, I come to you. I come to you from the depth of my heart. I come to you. You are the savior from sin. You are the savior from the devil. You are the one who comes to the world to die for me, a sinner. You died to, for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I believe tonight that it was for me. It was for me. You shed your blood. It was for me. You died on the cross. It was to give me new life. Tonight, forgive me. Tonight, save me. Tonight, take away my sinful life. Tonight, have mercy. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I don't want to cover my sin. I'm a sinner. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Deliver me, O oh Lord. What you did in the life of Mary Magdalene, do it in me. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. Take away my sinful nature. Give me your own life. Give me your own nature. Give me a new heart. Take away my heart of stone. That stubborn heart. Take it out of the way. Make me a 
child of God indeed. Lord, make me a child of God. Make me a child of God that I can boldly say I have been delivered from sin. I have been delivered from Satan. Make me a child of God. Put your seed in me. Jesus, I open my heart to you. Jesus, come in with your life. Come in. Come in, Lord Jesus. Make me your child tonight. Talk to him from the depth of your heart. Call on him while he is near. He is here to deliver. Satan will have no power over you from tonight. Tonight will mark the beginning of your victorious life. Talk to him. Call on him to come in. Tell him to come in. Open. Open the door. He said, I will come in. I will come in. I will eat with you. I will dine with you. Lord Jesus, come in. Come in. Come in, Lord. Come in, make me your child. Come in, oh Lord, give me a testimony. No more running elter skelter. Make me a stable Christian with a sure foundation that I will never be put to shame any longer. Lord, do it tonight. Do it tonight. Look at these hands that are lifted up to you. Do it, oh God. As they are lifting up these hands, mark them out for signs and for wonders. Mark them out as a testimony to what you did on the cross. Mark them out as a testimony to your death and your resurrection. Mark them out as women, women of testimony. Oh, do it tonight. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Lift up the hands. Lift up the hands to Jesus. Lift it up. It's unto the Lord. As a mark of surrender, lift it to him and call on him tonight. He is the one. He is the one who said that we do it. We must obey his word tonight. He says, come to me. Come to me. I will give you rest. Will you take a step out tonight and come over to the altar to meet the Lord? Come as you lift up those hands. Come to him. He is the one who says, come to him. Don't remain on your seat. Come to him in obedience. He says, I will give you rest i will i will i will says the lord i will give you rest come to me says the lord i will give you rest don't remain there take a step out take a step out out of your struggles out of your sinful life out out of your demonic attacks out of your failures out take a step out he said come to me i will give you rest i will give you rest says the lord he is the one who speaks if you hear his voice and you obey you are building your house upon a rock you are building upon a rock tonight open your heart to him confess the matter don't hide it from him as you have come to him open it open it to him he says i will give you rest he will break the yoke the yoke of sin will be broken tonight that bondage will be broken tonight the yoke of satan demonic attacks tonight marks the end of it jesus gives rest to those who come to him lord thank you tonight
morrer. Confesse dos sins. Confesse dos troubles that have troubled your life. Only because your foundation was faulty. That's why the devil has an inroad. The foundation was faulty. Call on the Lord tonight. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Be my sure foundation. Forgive me, O oh God. Deliver me. Pour your life into me tonight. I want to be yours forever. I will follow you all the days of my life. I will be your dwelling place. I will be your dwelling place. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come and live in me. From tonight, let it be Jesus living in me. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you thanks tonight. Thank you for coming to us tonight to reveal to us the faulty foundation that has been laid in our lives. And we have lived like that, struggling and in trouble all the time. But tonight we give you praise that you will not let our lives go down the drain. You do not want us to continue to live the way we have been living. You have come to us with your word tonight. We give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have heard your word tonight. You have called upon us and we have answered you. Lord, you have taught told us, you have spoken to our hearts, that you came to the world to save sinners. You did not die for your own self, you died for us. You took our place. Tonight we stand before you and we confess we believe you. The Bible says, I lay in Zion a stone for the foundation, a sure stone a sure foundation. Whosoever believes shall never be put to shame. Tonight we confess we believe in you. We believe in what you did for us on the cross. Father, tonight save us from our sins. Deliver us from our sins. Take away our sinful nature. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, oh Lord, Lord, our sins have opened the door. The devil has attacked us. Many times we have been attacked. But tonight, let tonight mark the end of that attack in the name of Jesus. Let tonight be the end of all the attacks of demons in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, tonight we plead with you. Since you came to the world and you died to uproot that our sinful nature. That thing we call our nature that made us to sin. Tonight we pray by your death on the cross. Uproot it in the name of Jesus. Uproot it in the name of Jesus. The yoke of the sinful nature. The yoke of Satan that has been on our neck all our lifetime. Tonight let it be broken in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. The power of sin, the power of the habits of life, the power of the world system, the power of demons, the power of Satan. We break it tonight in the name of Jesus. Tonight, you said, oh God, you said, if the Son shall set us free, we shall be free indeed. I declare tonight that everyone who have responded to you tonight, you are free indeed in the name of Jesus. You are free from your sinful nature. You are free from Satan. You are free from demons. You are free from your calamities in the name of Jesus. If you have not been sleeping well tonight, tonight mark the end of that era. In the name of Jesus, you will sleep well. Whatever is the is the 
calamity that the devil has brought because of those attacks, be it sickness, be it any kind of evil that the enemy has brought to your life. Tonight marks the end of it in the name of Jesus. Go in peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, you also promised. You said a new heart I will give you. A new spirit I will put within you. I will take away from you the heart of stone. I will put in you the heart of flesh. So tonight we pray as you take away the heart of stone, that sinful nature, put in us a new heart. Give us a new spirit. Put in us your very heart. The heart of Jesus. The very life of Christ. Breathe upon us the breath of life. In the name of Jesus. We open our hearts to you tonight. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come and live in us. Come and reign in us. Come and rule in us. Come and do your work in us. That everywhere we go, we go with Jesus. Sleeping, we sleep with Jesus. Trading, we are trading with Jesus. Working, we are working with Jesus. Lord, preaching, we are preaching with Jesus. Christ living his life in us let this be our experience in the name of jesus thank you father we go tonight carrying jesus in our hearts christ in you the hope of glory you will experience the glory of god from tonight in the name of jesus christ he shall be well with you from this night forward in the name Jesus Christ. And so tonight, oh devil, where is your power? Oh serpent, where is your sting? Jesus gives us the victory. So, Satan, take away your hands from these ones in the name of Jesus. You have no more power over any of these lives from this night forward. We lose your bond from their hearts in the name of Jesus. As they go tonight, they go free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We bless and we worship you. Lord, as we receive some instructions to enable us to walk in this new and living way, this victorious lifestyle, Lord, I pray, help us, oh God, to receive instructions. Amen. Help our hearts never to be in a hurry. Amen. Help us, oh God, not to deceive ourselves. Amen. Help us that those who have gone ahead of us on this path of victory, Amen. we will receive instructions to them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, please help us that we also, in a few moments to come, will be able to help other lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory tonight. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. I want you to thank God. Just thank God. Just say thank you, Jesus. I know you have broken the yoke. I know you have come into my heart. You have forgiven me my sins. I know you have uprooted my human nature. You died on the cross for me. Thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for breaking the yoke of sin. Thank you for breaking the yoke of Satan. Thank you for giving us power over sin. We will no longer go and sin. You said go and sin no more. That will be our experience tonight. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.